meet the mighty rook the rook looks like a castle in itself and in a game of chess every player gets two rooks each and both these rooks stand on the corner of the board when the game is about to begin now let's learn how a rook moves on the chess board so the movement of rook is very simple it always moves in straight lines so if your rook is sitting here it can go straight up or it can go straight down or it can go straight left or it can go straight right in one single move it can cover short distances as well as long distances so for example if we want to go a short distance let's say it's just want to go one square then it can come to this square like this if he decides to go long distance let's say he wants to go to the edge of the board then from this particular square it can go to any of these squares marked in green so it can go to the edge of the board like this it can also cover medium distances let's say it doesn't want to go too short or it doesn't want to go too long over here then it can also go any of the squares lying in between the short and long distances in short wherever the rook is standing from there it can go on all the squares that come in a straight line so the rook can travel to all of these squares now let's see the rook in action so it can go long distances like this or it can go short distances like this basically the rook can go wherever it wants to provided that the square that it aims to go to should be in a straight line but what about the other squares let's say if my rook is standing here and now he wishes to go to this square then how will it go well it will take a minimum of two moves for this rook to reach this destination square so the first route would be going straight up and then landing on this square and then in the second turn the rook can come to this destination square an alternate route would be the rook can first go straight to the left and land on this square and then in the second turn it can go from this square to this square like this let's see one more example let's say now from here this rook wants to go to this square how will it go well there are two shortest routes available the first route is rook can go to this square and in the second turn it can go to this square that would be one route and the other route would be it can first go to this square and then in the second turn it can land on its destination square that's easy right now what about if there is another chess piece standing on its way now can this rook jump over this piece and reach here no rooks cannot jump if his own army piece is blocking his way then either he will have to move this particular piece or the rook will have to find a new route to get there so obviously the one shortest route available is still this one but an other route would be since the rook now cannot pass through this piece he can first come to this square and then to this square and then finally to this destination square so it will take three moves for the rook to reach this destination square what if there is one more piece standing on its way well the rook can still follow this path that i've showed you or it can now also follow this path which is like coming to this square and then to this square and then finally to this square so there are a lot of routes possible to reach this destination square in the game of chess most of the time you will pick up the shortest routes so that you could save your time in the game now let's say instead of our own army piece and an opponent's army was sitting and blocking our way then how would this rook go to this square well rook do have a lot of options to reach this destination square as you can see i'm marking it on the chess board but the rook also have the option of following this path and that is first it can come straight down and now since the opponent's piece is blocking his way the rook can now capture this opponent's piece so when the rook will capture this piece and take a halt on this square the opponent's piece will be moved out of the board that means that opponent piece will not be able to help his army in defeating us and now it took one move to reach the rook here and now from here the rook can either decide to come to first this square and then finally to this destination square or 
from here it can first go to this square and then to this square so it would take three moves for the rook to reach on this destination square now let's see some more capturing moves of the rook in this example it is white's turn to move so white has the option of capturing the opponent's rook here he also have the option of capturing this opponent's rook over here so white can decide to capture any of the rooks let's say white decides to capture this rook so he can come over this square and take this piece off the board and now it is black's turn and now black also has the option of capturing either this rook or this rook let's say black decides to capture this one so it comes over to the square and there goes our piece so the capturing move of the rook is very similar to the way it moves on the board in short if the opponent's piece is standing on the squares that the rook controls then that rook can capture that opponent piece now let's eat up all of these opponent pieces one by one first the rook can eat this piece and then this over here and then this over here and then this and finally this now that you have learned how to move the rook and capture opponent's pieces now let's understand how many points have been assigned to this rook now in a game of chess all the chess pieces are assigned some points based on how powerful they are in the game so if a piece has less points that means that piece isn't that powerful likewise if a piece has more chess points then that means that that particular piece is the most powerful and it is more valuable than other chess pieces on the board now chess pieces have been assigned values from 1 to 9 based on their strength so in a game of chess a rook has been assigned 5 points because when it is placed in the center of the board it can control a total of 14 squares you want to see how see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 that's a lot of squares when the same rook is placed on the edge of the board it can control 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 14 square squares again and when the same rook is placed on the corner of the board it is again able to control a total of 14 squares so it doesn't matter where the rook stands on the board wherever it stands it can control a total of 14 squares on the board and because of this power the rook has been assigned 5 points that means a rook is worth 5 points in a chess game now what is all this point system if you want to understand in the upcoming videos i will discuss about this topic more in detail also do give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to my channel and by the way did you check the membership program that i have offered on this channel go check it out and join soon and now comes my favorite part of the video and that is the question of the day and my question is it is white's turn to move and you have to tell me if this rook sitting over here can capture this opponent piece sitting over here answer with a yes or a no in the comments box and i shall see you in the next video bye